what is a patent, who can apply for one, and you know what what's their function within a, a business or a legal framework. Exactly, that's a very good point to start because first of all, you need to understand that patent is one of many rights that belong to intellectual property rights. First of all, a patent is a legal title, you could say. Anyone who owns a patent has the possibility to use it in very many ways. For instance, he can actually exclude others, third parties, competitors, etc., from using his protected patent protected invention without his consent. In other words, he can ask for licenses if somebody else wants to use his invention. A patent is also a legal or rather technical document containing a lot of valuable uh, technical teaching. A patent protects, legally protects a technical teaching which offers a technical solution to a technical problem. A, a problem. This is its main function. So a patent in that sense, of course, is a document of technological progress. So if you monitor patents in your area of activity, you get a pretty good idea what the development trend in your area is, who the actors are, what they are doing, and possibly also what their intention is. And as I'll be showing you in a moment, when we look at the patent document to see uh, what it does do, it also gives you a clue of actually who the bright minds behind an invention are. The exactly. patent is a perfect communication system on, on technological progress in its own right. It's often seen just as a big element of just uh, raking in money. But I have to say, while that definitely is an important function, actually to uh, recoup R&D investments, its main function is to create knowledge, disseminate knowledge, and promote innovation across the area in which it is actually um, uh, valid. And the patent doesn't last forever in a day. Its term is restricted to 20 years maximum from the day of first filing a, your patent application. Now, what does it mean? You can take your invention, write a patent, and drop that uh, patent application in the inbox of your patent office let's take the german office or the uk and from that then uh, from, from that day onwards the clock starts ticking and 20 years from let's say today at the latest your patent is over so it doesn't last forever in a day you have to also pay for it to maintain it once it has been granted right. it doesn't automatically uh, extend itself so you have to do quite a lot as patent owner, take a lot of decisions what you want to do with it. Yeah. And so that, that's an interesting point, I think, about patents, isn't it? That um, obviously I have developed or invented something which I think is unique, that I, I think there's some um, some benefit uh, for society, but also maybe benefit for myself in, if I can turn it into a product and sell it. But the patent is actually require me to share that, that invention, share that knowledge with other people in order to protect it at the same time. So um, that sort of brings me on to a, another question. What can we actually patent uh, through Europe and what can't we? Because I, I've heard in the past through, especially in the US, there was a lot of discussion about whether I could patent, say, software algorithms. There is actually um, almost, uh, to put it at a very wide angle, the patent system is essentially non-discriminatory. Okay. It does not exclude a priori any technology from being patented unless there is a law that, that, that rules a, a patent for certain technologies out. So any technology is a priori accessible to patent protection. And that's not the EPO is saying that, that's actually a general international principle because the patent system in Europe is not one that acts in its own right in the sense that it's uh, dissolved from anyone else. There is a very close cooperation from the EPO with a large number of uh, national patent offices, first of all, of course, from the member states of, of our organization, but then also outside. Just want to mention the close cooperation we're having with the United States, with the Chinese mm -hmm. office, with the Japanese and the Korean offices, but then also with the World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva, which is a, which is a UN body 
governing a contract that basically allows a parallel patent application simultaneously in one in more than 160 countries worldwide. So there are a number of contracts and agreements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in place that sort of regulate how a worldwide patent application scheme can functioning. The only thing that's actually missing is the grant of a world patent. We don't have a world patent and we don't have a world patent office, but there are international principles, legal principles, and also technical principles that ensure that we have more or less the same understanding of patent protection around the world. Okay. So um, if, if I have an invention, what is the, the process? You said um, that uh, once I, my, I want to make my patent application, I can sort of drop it by the German office. But uh, what form does that take? Do I need a completely written patent document at that stage? And uh, once, I've, once I've submitted those, that documentation, how long to, can it then take before I'm granted a patent if, if, I'm, if I'm allowed to receive that, that, uh, that patent? Well, when you've made an invention, the, recommend, the recommendation is that you go and see, for instance, a patent attorney that helps you draft a patent application, because it's quite often the case that when an engineer, you know, when an engineer thinks he's made an invention, the patent attorney will tell him, no, you haven't, because uh, that has been invented before. But there is a exactly. detail in your invention that nobody has actually thought of before. And that is your invention and not a big thing that you thought you had invented. So yeah. we strongly recommend to actually consult the services of a patent attorney because filing a patent application is a strictly legal and formalistic process that uh, is actually subject to uh, the, the governing laws, for instance, the German national patent law or the European patent convention. Okay. And um, what you don't want to do is to miss out on any of the rules there, because if you do, you might lose your right to the patent and that's not what we want. So go and talk to a patent attorney and he will actually fill in the form or rather online form for a European patent application or national patent application. And these patent applications are looking all the same across the world because that is harmonized. They start on the title page where they say everything about the who, what, when, and especially the date that the invention was uh, was, was uh, received its initial stamp, because this is when the time stamp, this is when the clock starts ticking. And then you continue with a description of what you have invented. You have to set it out against the problem that you're trying to solve. And you have to explain to us what you have done, how you've gone about this and uh, what you say the result is. And in the end, your patent attorney will have to turn to this wonderful language that you mentioned at the beginning and formulate the legal, technical, uh, very difficult to understand type of so-called patent claims. But that is what is essential. And this is what the patent office and uh, perhaps later also judge will look at to decide how far the patent goes, what does it cover, and actually uh, what is really the subject of the invention. So. Once you have filed that with us, uh, the patent comes to your patent application, comes to at the EPO to a so-called search division, who's carrying out, these are all specialists, yeah, carrying yeah. out a novelty search, finding out if your invention has already existed somewhere in the world. And they don't just look at patents, they look at everything. They consult databases, technology databases, uh, patent literature, non-patent literature, whatever. Even uh, from standardization organizations, we have uh, documentation that we can actually check. Has this already been disclosed anywhere? Because in order to be really um, a patentable invention, the first thing is it needs to be novel mm -hmm. in an absolute exactly. sense, not having uh, been, des been described anywhere in the world before. And we also check, is it an invention in the sense, does it have an inventive activity? Meaning you don't just, uh, you, you haven't just taken your, the handle off the door and mounted it the other way around. So there has to be some, some gist behind this, you know, some okay. clever idea. And then it has to be also disclosed in such a manner that a person skilled in the art is kind of an artificial person that doesn't really exist. Nobody's ever seen one, but we all understand what is meant by it. <laughs> we, if you have an expert, he must be able to actually 
reversely engineer your invention and understand what it is and yeah. produce it and reproduce it. So you have to disclose what you have done. Exactly. And after a period of 18 months, your patent application together with the report on whether it's novel or not, an inventive or not, uh, at first glance, will be published, meaning it goes, it appears on the website of the EPO uh, or of any national patent office, uh, office, and it can be inspected by anyone. But that also means that from that day onward, that you have a possibility to take legal action if somebody infringes that invention uh, and by filing an application for the same subject matter later or using it without your priority, uh, with your permission, etc. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's so, important we do that. It's exactly, yeah, the yeah. possibility to, you know, to benefit from your invention, but at the same time also share it with the public. Yeah. Anybody exactly. having an interest can inspect it. So the, 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 the topic of uh, protecting um, uh, a patent, I, I wanted to come on to later, but yeah. be before we get to that stage where the patent claims have been uh, pro um, checked and, and the patent has, has got to a stage where it can actually be issued, um, for, for somebody who is inventing someone, who's developing something, um, at what point during the development of their invention, when they, they start to realize there is something patentable there, um, at what point should they apply for the patent? I, I guess as soon as possible. I mean, that's a very, that's a, there is no one solution for all. It depends a bit on the technology that you're on the way. It, it depends on what you're doing. If you're, a, if you're let's say, a startup and uh, you have a very good idea, I think, and, and you have elaborated a bit, then maybe it's, it's good to go there at the very early stage to speak to a patent attorney because yeah. you're then in a very vulnerable position and the patent attorney can help you with the most important thing, namely avoid that your invention is being leaked. If you've made an invention and you think you're on a good track, the first thing to do is not to talk about it, not to go to a trade fair ex to exhibit it, not yeah. to go to, to, to a science paper and write about it. But first, see your patent attorney, otherwise uh, uh, people might say, well, I've already heard about that and you can't get your patent. And that's very, very sad. So for if you are a young enterprise trying to sort of uh, take a foot in the market, you, you know, getting money through a patent is probably the only way to, of developing. And so it, it's very advisable to consult with uh, uh, a patent attorney at a very early stage. If you're a large pharmaceutical company, you won't have the problem at all because you have a large patent, uh, patent department behind you who will actually formulate the research and also the uh, IP strategy that you need to apply. So, But uh, the general principle that is uh, valid for all is do not divulge before you file. It's the other way around. First file, then talk about it. Exactly. So That's uh, we... the most important thing. So you, you mentioned there as well startups, and obviously startups can be very varied in, in their nature. Some some yep. are bootstrapped with, with personal finance. And um, as soon as the word attorney is mentioned, you can almost feel your, your wallet being emptied. Yep. Um, so uh, is, is there a chance for somebody to apply for a patent without getting support from attorney? Or, or is that really the only, the only sensible way uh, in order to, to make, go, go through the process? It's the preferable way. Let's put it like that. I wouldn't want to speculate now to what extent you can first drop an insufficiently defined patent application into a letterbox in order to get the priority stamp and then yeah. go and see your patent attorney. I would always recommend to do it the other way around. But uh, it is important that you do it be because we have solid evidence uh, from uh, studies that uh, our chief economist unit has done that for a startup filing a patent application, especially European application, is a safe way forward for growing and creating economic value for themselves and also for others. Because yeah. an idea uh, to have an idea is great to formulate it out with the help of a, of a patent attorney is probably even better. There is no even if there is no legal, uh, there's no legal uh, uh, let's say, you're not forced to do this as long as you, let's say, if you're a German company domiciled in Germany and want to file in a, with the European Patent Office, but if you come from the US, you then you have to have representation before the EPO. But we always 
uh, tell people, don't go any risks. Go and find uh, yourself somebody who can represent you. Yeah. Now, um, I've got lots, lots of questions to cover, but uh, yeah. time is flying by. So um, coming sort of towards that point where the, you know, we're, we're thinking about making the application for a patent and, and the financial costs involved of, of even starting this process. If I don't have the financial resources to fight an infringement of my patent, if I were to receive it, does it, does it make sense to apply for a patent at all? Should I, should I have that in mind before I even start the process? Absolutely. I mean, it's uh, the patent will help you building a bridge to investors who can help you in that. It might even help you to find <clears throat> a larger company who has an interest and in producing your invention. So you can actually give out a license, you can share the risks, you can minimize your own risks. Sharing or giving out licenses or even selling the patent, if it comes uh, to that, might be a good way forward. So there's lots of things you can do. A patent puts your invention into a tradable format. Yeah. And then you can do with it what whatever is most suited, uh, best suited for your own uh, business strategy. But the thing is, you need to have one. If you don't have a strategy and you don't know what you want to do with it, then a patent is just an investment. So it's always good to think of you want to do, uh, what you want to do with it. Maybe you're a small company having an investor or finding someone who is a producer for your invention or actually yeah. help you to bring it to market is probably a very good way forward. Also mm -hmm. from the point of view of mitigating risks. So uh, one last question then before we move on to Solaris floats who uh, applied for a patent recently um, in the last couple of years. Uh, does the EPO, the European Patent Office, offer any training or anything similar on, on, the, on applying for patents and, and the process? We do. We have a, a unit called the, uh, the European Patent Academy. They do have a lot of courses where you can actually uh, go and see what, you know, they learn about patenting, what it is, what it's doing. And there are, and there are also some e-learning courses that are quite helpful in that respect. Yes, but there is yeah. possibilities to get information on how to get a patent, what to do with it and how to go about it. Super. Well, thanks very much, Brian, for those insights. I think that's uh, brought us all a long way forward on, on the basics of, of patents and, and the application process and what the EPO's involvement in that process is.